Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today I am back from vacation. That means one, I should sound like myself again, and two, we should be able to catch up on some news I'm a little bit behind on, such as today's release of Material Maker 1, which technically happened a couple of days ago, which is a shame because I have followed this program since the very beginning. Now if you're looking at it going, hey, that looks kind of familiar, yes, this was built using the Godot game engine, so you've got a very Godot-esque aesthetic. Uh, one of the things I did ask for in the past, however, was theming, and it was in fact added. So if you want to burn your eyes out, there is a light theme, or you can customize the theme to your heart's content. We'll stick with the default theme. Now, what you see going on here, this material in the background here is being created with this network of nodes. So it uses... Um, Again, a bit like Substance uses, you use a number of materials to go together or a number of nodes. They all work together uh, to ultimately create such as the material you see being previewed here in the background. There is a ton of nodes to work with. I'm not going to go into a lot of what is in the, the various different options here, but you've got uh, 3D, uh, you've got uh, various different noises and things you use and combine them together to create procedural materials. Now, once you've got the materials that you want to have, the even cooler part is it is game engine ready. So if you come up here, here, you go to file, export material, and you will see you can export it out as Blender, Godot, Unity, Unity HDRP pipeline, uh, the P was redundant there, and as well as the Unreal Engine. And some of these can actually export out as shaders. So if they're animated, the results that you worked with, it will export out as a shader graph, which is actually really kind of cool. So you can see one of the examples available here. You can see a different one. This one creates a bundle of chains. Again, you can see the node network uh, that goes together to create the material here that you see in the background. By the way, you also have control over the lighting environment. Right now I have one that's pretty dark. Let's switch to a forest view so you can see it a little bit better. Um, so you get a preview of what you are working on over here, the end result of your node. So the end, your end node is always this, I'm not, I guess not technically always, but there's a static PBR material that's exported out and it will create all the relevant uh, PBR workflow maps. So your uh, albedo, metallic, roughness, emissions, normal, whichever ones you have set up. You can also set uh, the ultimate resolution that you wish to export out as, as low as 64 by 64 and up to 8K by 8K. Um, you can also create your own nodes here. They're all basically GLSL shaders. So if you want to extend things on your own, you can do so. Here is another example creating stylized rocks and once again it is this network of nodes that go together to procedurally create this um this object so uh, you, you're tiling and so initial shape of a circle that you modify and blur it and then tile it and have it repeat a number of times and ultimately you end up with this guy so you're using all of these various different node combinations together uh, to create your materials. Another cool thing with this guy, and I'm not going to focus on it today, um, is that you can actually export out, uh, sorry, now you can do 3D model painting, sort of like the beginnings of uh, Substance Painter is being built into this tool as well. All very cool stuff, and the reason why we we're talking about it today is Material Maker 1.0 was just released. Um, so in this update, uh, one of the nice things that you're seeing in this particular example is it is now notarized, so if you're working on Mac OS, you can just download it and run it, which makes using it a whole lot easier than it used to be. Uh, plus, we have some improvements to the nodes, such as the SDF, the Easy SDF node, which is signed distance fields, uh, used to make basic 3D shapes. It was extended with 3D primitives, operators, and transforms. Now it can be used to create uh, complex ray-marched shapes. Uh, so depending on the content, uh, we'll therefore output a 2D SDF or a 3D SDF result. Uh, there's also a new seven-digit display for making uh, digital, or I was about to say analog digital I don't know what that would be now. I guess that's an analog watch face or an old school digital watch face. But anyways, for creating that old retro style, uh, there is this new seven segment display in there. And then we got a number of improvements to the various different things that are built into this. This guy has improved steadily and staggeringly over the time in the four years since it was first launched. And I love the fact that they are launching a 1.0 release. A lot of developers hide behind the fact that, oh no, this is a 0.08. You can't take it too serious. But when you throw a one there, that is a, an endorsement. And tr truth told, this product is ready to go. It, it is a very impressive program. And if you have not checked it out already, I highly recommend you do so. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, it is also an open source product. Project. It is under the MIT license. Again, it was made uh, using uh, the Godot game engine. 
Uh, so you're going to see, if you've worked with Godot, you're going to see a lot of things like T-Res, resource files, and so on. And uh, script, a lot of it is done with GDScript. I think the vast majority of it actually done with GDScript. Yeah, 95% of this was written in GDScript, and the rest is shadered language. It's also awesome that uh, GitHub now recognizes GDScript as an official programming language. That is cool. I don't know when that happened, but I like that change. Also, there is full documentation for everything. There are a ton of nodes in here, by the way. So if you want to uh, get into all the various different nodes, how they work, and so on, everything here is documented. Plus, if you wish to create your own uh, materials, again, it is built on the Godot way of doing things. Uh, but ultimately, I believe they're all GLSL shaders. So if you're comfortable writing GLSL shaders, you can extend this thing pretty readily as well. So if you want to go ahead and check out Material Maker, it is available at materialmaker.org. Another really cool thing about it is you come here to the website. Now, a bit of feedback to the developer. Uh, the only place you can download is here which is interesting. This is on your homepage. There is the download on itch.io, which by the way, you click if you want to go ahead and download it. It's available right here. It's one of those name your price things. Your price can be zero, uh, but th there should be a download link here. So when you're on another page, such as for example, you're in the documentation, you should be able to get back. But most specifically, when you're in the asset section, there should be a, just a download link right here. Just a small bit of feedback. It's, it's you got to go to the homepage to download it, which seems a little bit weird. Uh, so anyways, there's also this guy that has been added. This was added a couple of releases back. Uh, it is basically a library of materials. It gives you an idea of what you can actually do with this guy, and there's 43 pages worth of them. So if you're looking at uh, trying to create bricks, for example, here are a number of bricks. Now, of course, you're downloading equivalent to the source code. So you're getting the, the grid network of nodes that go together to create this particular material. Uh, also, you've got some other options here. So in addition to the materials, you also have uh, a nascent, we'll call it. This is for the painting side of things. You got some brushes, and you've also got some uh, environment. So if you want different HDRI render maps, they're available here as well. But what you're mostly going to want is the materials here, which by the way, if you go back over to Material um, Maker, you will notice you go to File, and then you can say Load Material from Website. You can actually get access to all of those various different things uh, that are available there. So go ahead, grab that guy. It will download it and open it up, and there you can see the end result. And I think this is using the new feature that was just added, uh, that seven-digit field. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and start checking out some materials, see how they were made, basically just come on in here, load a material in from the website, uh, pick something that looks cool. Ooh, that looks terrifying. But you can get an idea of just what kind of stuff you can create with this, uh, including and up to sewn flesh materials. We'll give it a second for this one to load in. Uh, come on. Ah, I don't know if it's going to, I don't know if we have an underlying issue. Let me switch. Oh, no, there it is. Just took a second to load in. Uh, so yeah, you can create some nightmare fuel out of this guy. And again, if you want to come in and figure out what these things look like, you basically just go through the node network and you can see how things, uh, work together. Now, the nice thing is some of these things are nicely commented, uh, into these various different groups. So, you know, you might find this is for making the stitches. This is for making the flesh. This is for blending things together and so on. And controlling this very straightforward middle mouse button, uh, control and scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And then it's a matter of you connect pins, inputs on the left side, outputs on the right side. And uh, that is kind of the extent of it. And the end result, again, is generally a static PBR material result. Uh, but you can also do, a, by the way, a right click and all of your various options are available there. Plus you have them available in this library over here. So you have access to this uh, archive of them. And, oh, by the way, you also have a, a quick jump over here. So if you want to navigate fast through your graph, uh, you can do so down there. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is Material Maker 1.0. Congratulations and happy birthday, Material Maker. If you have not checked out this excellent program, uh, it is stunning. Uh, again, it, it is the closest thing you are going to find to a free and open source version of Substance Designer and slowly Substance Painter, but mostly Substance Designer. And it is a very cool program in its own right. And again, it is completely free and open source, and it is improving at a staggering rate, including the 1.0 birthday that was just celebrated. So happy birthday, Material Maker. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.